Okay. Our next product po, this is the exciting, the most exciting product that we've been trying to develop since then, no, Sir JC. Okay, so finally, I hope this will be, ano na po, uh, push through na natin ito ngayon. Alright, so this is the CTPL or the Comprehensive Third Party Liability. Actually, uh, ito pong online CTPL namin, meron kaming tagline po dito. So, we call this TPL sa tamang presyo. So, yan po yung, kumbaga, yan po yung tagline namin. TPL sa tamang presyo. Why? Because as mentioned by Sir JC that when you go to LTO, I think the price is 100%. I think 50% uh, more. So, let's say if you're paying 700 pesos for a private car, private car vehicle, so LTO I think is 1,200 plus. And you have to line up pa, pipila pa ho kayo. So with this, uh, I'll show you the accessibility, the, the convenience, and the efficacy na may, may bibigay po ng CTPL online. Okay. So first, let's uh, uh, check po muna natin ano po ba yung CTPL. Uh, CTPL kasi, ang alam po ng mga vehicle owners, kasi ito po all persons who own vehicles, regardless of the model, of the age of the vehicle, they are required to purchase CTPL. Okay. Ang alam lang po kasi ng iba, CTPL um, compliance. So, kailangan siyang bumili ng CTPL to comply with the LTO requirements para po makapag-register siya, ma-register yung vehicle and then makuha niya na yung sticker and then so, pwede na po siyang uh, gamitin yung vehicle niya off the road. Okay, so yun lang ang alam po niya. So, you have to pay this much, kuha niya na po yung COC, and then punta na po siya doon sa LTO to register. But then, there are people din po na hindi nila alam na meron palang benefits and usage po nitong CTPL. Baka kala nila na dadali lang po doon, isasubmit lang sa LTO, tapos na yun. And then next year, kukuha na naman ako ng TPL para makapag-register ako. Kasi every year po yan, nire-renew. And then every year din tayo nagre-register ng mga vehicles. Okay, so bibigay ko po, ano po ba yung usage at benefits ng CTPL? Aside from makakapag-register po sa LTO kasi requirements po siya ng LTO. Okay, so... Uh, ito pong ano po ba kinocover ng CTPL. So, CTPL stands for Compulsory Third Party Liability. It is um, mandated by the Land Transportation Operation, LTO, of the Philippines for all motor vehicle uh, owners. So, CTPL protects you, the vehicle owner, from any possible liability for a third party caused bodily injury <clears throat> and or death in an accident arising from the use of your motor vehicle. In layman's term, ang ano lang po niyan is kapag nakasagasa or nakabundol, yung pong CTPL policy na binili po niyo sa insurance company na ginamit naman po sa pag-register sa LTO, yan po ang magre-respond sa expenses uh, Instead of sa packet po nung may-ari na sasakyan, ay yung mga expenses na, na gagamitin niya dahil nakabundol po siya, nakasagasa, ito pong TPL policy ang magre-respond po dito. So wala na po siya ilalabas na pera. All you have to do is uh, claim po niya yan din sa insurance company. Okay. Um, kasi worse din po dito, nakasagasa lang po siya. But then, namatay, yun po yung masakit doon. So, ano po yung gagawin ni client, I mean ni vehicle owner? Ito lang po, CTPL. So, ang CTPL coverage po kasi natin is 100,000. Standard po yan for all vehicle types. So, kahit private car, trucks, motorcycle, yung po mga vans, SUV, standard coverage po na CTPL is 100,000. That's for one year. Uh, standard din po yan sa lahat ng insurance companies, pare-pareho po siya. Pare-pareho po yun. Nagkakaiba lang is the premium. 
although kailangan po pare-pareho din pero of course due to competition meron ding iba insurance companies na nag-iiba-iba rin yung premium and of course pagdating po sa LTO napakataas na po siya this 50% uh, more so ko yung 700 1200 na po yan I think yung pong sa motorcycle, yung 300 pesos na sa 700 po yata siya. So yun po yung naririnig namin ng mga uh, clients po namin na dito na po kumukuha si TPL because mataas nga po sa LDO. The fact na kailangan pa nilang pumila, ganun po tapos mahal pa po siya. So dito lang po sa CT, online si TPL, tamang presyo po yung makukuha po niya. And valid pa po ito. Because sa uh, LTO, before, Meron po kasi dyan yung tinatawag natin mga fly-by-night ng mga insurance companies or mga kubo-kubo. So, kumbaga, fixer sila. Ganun sila ko ng TPL para daw madilis. But then, kung nagkaroon na po sila ng problema, hindi na nila sila mahanap. Unlike kung direct po ko sa insurance company kukuha, uh, direct na rin po kayo makakausap in case magkaroon po ng problema. Okay. Alright. So, CTPL. Ito po yung mga prices po niyan. Okay. For private cars, I'm sorry. Yung private cars po, ito yung mga personal use lang. So yung po mga SUV, vans, and mga AUV, um, although malalaki po sila compared dun sa mga four-door sedan, yung mga uh, Toyota Vios, Honda Civic, yung po mga SUV niyan, dito pa rin po sila magpa-fall and the private cars kasi private use lang po nila yon. Okay, so ito lang po yung um, um, babayaran nila. They have to pay 700 pesos. This is an annual premium for one year na po siya, 700 pesos. For light vehicles, uh, kung meron po sila mga vans or mga uh, what is mga pickup na ginagamit po nila for business, for carrying of goods or nagte-transport po sila ng tao, uh, dito po siya makakategorize, makaklassify under light, medium trucks. So, 750 pesos po yan. And so on. Kung trucks naman po, yung ating member, pero nung silang mga tracking, business, mga logistics, dito po naman magkufall yung pabayaran po nila. That's 1,345. O, lahat po ito are annual premium for one year po siya. One year. Okay? So, Yung po mga taxi, that one. At po, motorcycle, that's 400 pesos. Um, sa LTO po yan talaga, I think 700 pesos po siya or mas mataas pa po. Okay. So, ito yung kinukover niya. Death, indemnity, burial, and uh, funeral expenses, that's 100,000 pesos po siya. Okay. Kung sakali nga po, as I said, nakasagasa or nabundol lang po siya, meron siya mga injuries. Doon po sa likod ng policy, meron po yung mga percentages kung magkano po yung babayaran. Okay, so bodily injury and fractures, meron po siyang percentage commensurate po doon sa extent po ng injury po niya. So, uh, ito po, based on the policy schedule or indemnities for bodily injury. For permanent disablement, ganun din po siya. Meron siyang corresponding percentage kung magkano po yung babayaran. But in case, yung pong uh, victim, hindi uh, talagang nasagasahan, namatay po siya, um, ang babayaran po ng insurance company is 100,000 dun po sa beneficiary. Yan, 100,000 po siya. Okay. Okay, so tatanungin po, okay, halimbawa naman po, uh, wag naman, uh, meron po siyang dalawang nasag na bundol. So, dalawa po siya. Okay? Yung pareho din po namatay. Yung pong 100,000, paghahatian po nila yon. Okay? So, 50-50 lang po sila. Kasi, um, per event po siya, per event, per occurrence. So, kung ilan po yung namatay, paghahatian lang po yung 100,000. Of course, hindi po yan sapat sa buhay ng tao. We know that very well. So, siguro po, nasa ano na lang po yung pag-uusap po ng mga uh, beneficiaries or yung mga families na naiwan ng mga victims, dun po sa vehicle owner. Okay, pero 
kasi parang bihira naman po yung nangyayaring ganun. Uh, okay, so ito po, standard siya 100,000 ang babayaran in case of death. Okay. So yun po yung, uh, that's what I'm trying to say, na akala po siguro ng ibang mga vehicle owner na compliance lang po yan, requirement lang po ng LTO. Hindi nila alam kung saan gagamitin po yun or meron pa lang paggagamitan itong CTPL policy. Kasi meron po kami nakausap before na tinanong po namin, bakit ka bibili ng TPL? Eh, wala eh. Kailangan sa LTO eh. Kailangan kong mag-register. Otherwise, hindi ako bibigyan ng sticker. Hindi ako makakapag-register. So, hindi ko siya magagamit sa road. And then, dun lang po namin in-explain. Uh, he was shocked na he was surprised na ito pala, may gamit pala itong CTPL policy. For what, so for 700 pesos, yung liability ko na magbayad dun sa mga third party na, na masasaktan ko because of my use of my vehicle, eh, hindi na ako magbabayad. Insurance naman pala. So, yung ganun. Uh, so, we just want to make uh, uh, these people aware of the benefits of having a CTPL policy. Yan po. Okay. So, yan po yung table of premiums po natin. That's fixed. Hindi na po yan mababago. Unless si Insurance Commission po. Because we heard that the Insurance Commission is planning to increase po yung premium. Sana po, wag naman. Okay. So, as, uh, hanggang wala po pong uh, advice ang insurance commission, this is our fixed premium, annual premium po siya, per classification of the vehicle. Okay. Now. Uh, for CCFED members, uh, this is what we have discussed with Sir JC and the uh, I forgot the other uh, members. So, ang gagawin po na, ito po yung process. Ito po yung steps. So, isa-isa po namin yan for, for the benefit of everybody para mas clear po siya. So, issuance of CTPL policy and COC. First step, uh, CFC member or CCFED uh, requests for CTPL insurance to CCFED because I understand CCFED will um, will assign a dedicated person who will handle this um, this program okay so the CC, CFC member will request a CTPL insurance to CC Fed next CFC member will provide a scanned copy of the certificate of registration the CR uh, CR to CC Fed through email via email okay and then CCFED, the dedicated person assigned, receives the email with a copy of certificate of registration and will forward through email to FGEN designated person. Okay, so kami rin po on our part, we will assign a designated person who will receive emails, email requests from CCFED. Next step, FGEN designated person receives the email and we'll proceed with the issuance of CTPL policy. Okay, so it's very important that we have a copy of the certificate of registration. If in case the certificate of registration is not available for whatever reason, pwede naman po yung kanilang policy. Let's say yung, yung, yung existing policy po nila, okay na po yun. We can, they can provide uh, that policy sa amin in the absence of certificate of registration. Can then next, so you four, uh, we will issue at the policy. Uh, fifth step, FGEN designated person will send via email a PDF copy or electronic copy of confirmation of cover and CTPL policy to the requesting member copying, copying in CC Fed. So this time, once the policy has been issued, we will send it directly na po to the member, to the one who is requesting the CTPL. So, hindi na po siya dadaan sa CCFED. But we will provide, uh, the CCFED will be copied in for the policy that we are going to send dun po sa member. 
or dun sa uh, vehicle owner. Para hindi na po siya pabalik-balik in process. Diretso na po yun. Okay. Number six, the member receives a PDF copy of the authenticated COC and CTPL policy from FGEN and prints the attached COC. So, ito naman po, you can remember once na receive po nila, they, all they have to do is just print it to any one paper or A4 size of a paper. And then they can already, the last stage is the member may now present the COC to LTO during the res registration of the vehicle. So the, the, the LTO will accept the COC na iniprint po ninyo. Okay, so doesn't have to be galing po talaga sa amin yung, yung hard copy. Uh, pero yung PDF na isasend po namin dun sa member, they can just print it out and then they can already present it to the LTO pag mag-register na po sila ng sasakyan. Ganun lang po siya kabilis. Ka okay. So, from CC Fed member, the member requests the CTPL, sends email to the CC Fed member, CC Fed designated person, and then forward the email to this FGEN designated person and then we will proceed with the issuance of the policy. Once the policy is done, we will send the PDF copy of the COC to directly to the, to the member copying in the CC Fed. So they, have, uh, they can have the files of those who requested the COC. Okay. Then the member will, will receive the PDF copy of the authenticated COC and then print, print it out and then they can already present it to the LTO. That's ganun lang po siya kabilis. Very easy, very convenient. Okay. Uh, kesa po yung pupunta pa sa LTO, doon bibili, pipila, yung queue is so long and then misan hindi pa rin natin alam kung if it's valid, if it's authenticated. Kasi po, uh, the fact na the COC, we will not release the COC unless it is authenticated. The authentication number will be, uh, is shown on the upper side of the COC. I will show you a sample of the COC. So it's shown in the upper right corner of the COC uh, certificate. Okay, so, um, if it's not authenticated, it's not valid. You can present it to the LTO. Okay, so, yun po, we have only have seven, seven steps sa issuance ng CTPL and the COC. So, for the turnaround time, if the request sent to us by 12 noon, so let's say from 8 a.m. to 12 noon, my email po sa amin, okay, the COC will be emailed until 4 p.m. of the same day. So when, if we receive the request up to 12 noon, we will send the PDF copy of the, of the policy until 4 p.m. of the same day. So yung, kung, kung baga, ang cut-off po namin na receiving of requests of CTPL is up to 12 noon. Okay, and then by 4 p.m., we will be able to send it out or send the COC to the member, directly to the member. If the request sent after 12 noon, the COC will be emailed at 9 o'clock a.m. the following day. Working days lang po siya. So if the, if the request um, was sent on a Friday, um, Friday, then so, uh, we will be sending the COC on Monday, 9 a.m. Monday of the following week. Okay. Um, the only delays that will happen or that we will encounter if the COCAF or the COCAF po kasi ito po yung, uh, sila po yung, um, what's this? Sila po yung nakikreate na authentication number. So, um, we're connected with the Stradcom and then they create the authentication number. So the only delays if there's an error, if there's a, a problem, the connection, if the connection is intermittently down or low, so 
that's the only time we will experience uh, delays. Otherwise, wala nun po. So, we will observe this turnaround time, the 4 o'clock p.m. and the 9 o'clock a.m. But that's very remote naman po or isolated yung mga ganun delays. Uh, most of the time, we were able to deliver the turnaround time as promised. Okay. Uh, for the claims handling, uh, you know what? Uh, sa city PL po kasi it's very, very, uh, very low po yung incidence ng claim. Actually, this is one of our profitable uh, lines, the city PL. Um, yung claim po nito is very minimal. Very minimal po siya. Um, mas maklaim pa nga po yung comprehensive insurance because, uh, you know, we just bump, we just, uh, pag yung v insured vehicle, nagkaroon lang po siya ng mga scratches, that's it, claim na po. Pero ito po kasi third party. So, it will only, uh, claim arises only kapag meron pong nabundol na third party or may nasagasaan. And that's very, ano lang po, very low lang po yung ganun mga incidents na na-experience po namin. But I will still discuss the claims handling, how to, uh, what are the requirements that have to be submitted by the insured vehicle, yung pong member, yung nakasagasa, and yung pong victim. Kasi syempre sa kanila rin po magagaling dun sa vehicle owner. Sila po mag-relay din dun sa third party yung pong victims nila kung ano po yung kailangan mga isubmit na documents. Okay. So first, the insured. Okay, so if I am the vehicle owner and meron po akong na-injured, meron ako na bundol na tao, um, I have to report it immediately Okay, uh, this I um, okay. Let's make it clear. So, kung clear cut po siya, hindi lang po namin pa na finalize with Sir JC if the insured can report can directly report to us the incident or the accident, or if is um does does it have to pass to CC Fed? I think. But the the last time we met. Uh, ito po yung napag-agrihan uh, namin, the insured reports accident to CC Fed. And then CC Fed would advise uh, insured to call FGEN. Or the CC Fed naman can call us na lang po if the insured will not be able to call us, whichever. So pwede po si CC Fed or si insured na lang po ang tumawag sa amin. But I think the insured can directly call FGEN if it's not possible for him to call CC Fed. Kasi the insured should report immediately to us yung pong accident. Kasi buhay po ng tao yun, kung sakaling nasagasaan or nabundol. So hindi na po siya kailangan dumaan sa marami pang proseso. So the member, yung pong insured vehicle, yung insured uh, owner of the vehicle, can directly call us and report the accident immediately. Okay, so ito po, insured may directly report an accident to FGEN. Doesn't have to pass through CC Fed. Okay. Number two, FGEN will require the insured and the third party victim to submit the documentary requirements. And these are the requirements. On the part of the insured or the vehicle owner, uh, we will be requiring vehicle certificate of registration and official receipt the driver's license and official receipt. Okay, so ito po yan. And for death claim, oh, sorry. For death claim, let's say nabundol po siya, pero dun sa scene po nung, nung, nung accident, namatay na po talaga yung victim, yung third party, uh, ito po yung re-require namin, accomplish claim report claim form which will be will be providing the 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 member police report ito po importante police report kailangan po na yan kung meron po mga death incidents then death certificate and proof of relationship to beneficiary ito po yung sa victim po yan dun sa third party sa part no, <coughs> excuse me sa part po ng insured ito lang po yung uh, i sasubmit po niya. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay, for bodily injury claim, ito naman po yung mga injuries lang po siya, bruises, medyo may mga nagkaroon lang po ng mga pantal or uh, what do you call this? <coughs> Iba, mga bruises, ga galos, ito po yung require namin, accomplish claim form, medical certificate, the bills and receipts, kung um, nagpa-diagnose po siya, kung nagpa-treat po siya sa hospital, and physician's prescription for all na mga medicines na bibilin po nila. In case of disablement, uh, misan, uh, na, kahit na-treat na po siya, after a few days, talagang due to complication, na-disabled po yung, yung victim, ito po yung mga requirements, accomplished claim form, operating room record, and detailed clinical summary from the attending physician. Okay, so those are the requirements. Uh, based on based on the type of accident that happened. Number three, insured and third party victims submit complete requirements to FGEN. And then FGEN will evaluate and process the reported claim from date of receipt of complete documents. We will only start the processing upon completion of the documents. Misan po kasi uh, submission uh, of documents was done uh, per ano per budget. I will we will receive this document then after a few days this document. So hindi po siya completo. We will only start the evaluation upon completion of the documents. Okay. So once we receive the complete documents, approval of claims, so we have to count the turnaround time, we will not start if premium is not yet remitted to FGEN. Okay, for example, uh, the premium is not yet remitted to Fortune, they have to pay once uh, for that particular policy so we can process the claim. We will not proceed with the processing of claim unless the premium is not yet paid. Okay. And then next, the turnaround time from claim processing to release of check. For minor injuries, we have seven working days. Um, why seven working days? Because we have to evaluate uh, the the, the report that uh, the client will submit based on the you know the injuries baka po yung injuries po niya is not related to the incident that happened on that particular day so we will have to evaluate our claims processor will carefully evaluate if the report is valid or not if outpatient uh, also seven working days okay so this is the turnaround time in case of injuries pusha i'm sorry Okay. For the release of payment to third party claimant, third party claimant receives check and will sign release papers such as so um, the claimant punya in third party, they have to physically um, proceed with our office because they have to sign release documents like release of claim and affidavit of desistance. Once they have released, they have uh, signed these papers, our member, our insured, has been uh, released with his obligation and liability to the victim. So tapos na po yung liability ng may-ari ng vehicle dun po sa nabundol po niya or nasagasahan. Tapos na po yun. Because we have already paid uh, the commensurate amount dun po sa mga injuries po niya. Okay, so hanggang dito po, Hanggang sa number five, dito lang po marirelease yung obligation ng client kapag na-receive na po ni third party yung payment and has already signed the release of claim and affidavit of this distance. Um, our company has appointed a dedicated this is an uh, third party, third party adjuster. So, wala pong ano dito, hindi po siya magiging bias sa pag sa pag-evaluate ng or ng report or ng claim. Uh, we have appointed Claridel Insurance Adjuster to handle third party bodily injury claim under this program. 
the loss adjustment services will be provided 24 hours a day and seven days a week. So if in, if in case the accident happened and we are of uh, 2 a.m., of course, wala na pong office nun, ito pong Claridel Insurance Adjuster, they can contact the hotline of this insurance adjuster and report the, report the accident. And they will uh, immediately proceed to the uh, site of site of the accident. Pupunta po sila doon. If they really have, uh, kung halimbawa, nandun pa rin po yung, yung, dead, yung dead victim, pupuntahan po nila yan. Kaya meron po silang hotline. Yan, ito po yung mga contact numbers. They have to call attorney Noel Salvador at this number and then Don Alcantara. Ito po, 24 hours po yan, 24 hours. So expect that they will really attend to your uh, report in case there will be accidents. And okay, so FGN reserves the right. Okay, so if we really have to require additional documents based on the evaluation of the, our adjuster, then we will do so. Ano lang naman po yan, konti lang naman po yung mga hihingi namin. On top of dun sa na-discuss ko po kanina na requirements, there may be some other documents na kailangan po isubmit ni insured, yung pong vehicle owner, and the third party. Okay. I think yun po naman po mga vehicle owners, alam naman po nila because they, they hold of this kind of uh, document. Ito po yung certificate of registration. So ito lang po yung um, email nila dun sa CCFED, only this. If they can also send the OR, much, uh, so much the better. Pero kung ito lang po available, they can send this one. Ito po. We just hope that there are kasi those certificate of registrations that are not really clear. They are not readable. So we just request po sana the member to provide us a clear, clear copy of the certificate of registration. Kung medyo you na notice nyo po na medyo malabo, minsan po kasi na doon po sa pagtatype ng LTO, especially this one, the point chassis number, napakaliliit po niyan. So, misan hindi po namin mabasa. If in case na hindi po siya readable, uh, may we also request the insured member na magpapagawa po ng TPL to please provide us their old policy. Kasi I think uh, it's a lot more easier to, to, to read. So, kasi yun po yung magiging reference namin for us to be able to issue the policy. Otherwise, mahirapan po kaming basahin po yun, it will take some time bago po namin ma-issue. Mahirapan po kasi yung issue once. So, uh, dito po nagkakaroon ng cause of delay. Kasi kailang pa po nila talagang hanapin. Eh. Uh, I mean, they really have to find out ano ba tong number na to, ano ba tong letters na to. So, yun lang po request namin, a uh, clear copy of the certificate of registration or please provide us the old policy. So, yan po yung certificate of registration that will be provided to us. Now, once we have issued the policy, ito na po yung sample ng confirmation, I'm sorry, confirmation of cover. It's a one page lang po siya, pero um, issued a half page. Pareho lang naman po yan. Um, because some LTO po kasi, kinukuha lang nila yung half page and then the half page po will be left for the uh, copy of the member. Yeah. So ito po yung sinasabi ko na authentication number. Papan ba siya? Okay. It's confirmation of, uh, this is the authentication number. This becomes valid when you see an, authentic, an authentication number. Yan po. But uh, we will not be able to send this to you if the information are incomplete, if you were not able to authenticate it properly. So I will not send it to you if uh, the details are not um, fully complete. Okay. So this is the copy. Now you can present this now to the LTO without the policy jacket. Because uh, I understand baka yung iba po, they are expecting a real policy uh, with, the, uh, with the cover of the policy jacket, the hardbound policy jacket. Uh, but you can already uh, present this to LTO. 
but we are also we will be providing a PDF copy of the policy schedule. On top of the certificate of confirmation of cover, we will be providing the member a complete details of policy schedule with clauses and warranties and uh, with the um, conditions, terms and conditions. But only this page lang po ang sasubmit nila sa LTO. They don't have to submit the whole policy schedule. Um, just this one will only be presented to the LTO. Okay. If in case uh, the, the, the email, the email was, how do you call that? The email was um, lost or uh, accidentally put into the, the trash, they can also request us to provide them another set of copy of the COC. We can print again, we can send them again a new copy of the confirmation of cover. But it's still the same, still the same, number of authentication number, everything is still the same. We will just have to extract a new copy and send it to the member. Kung kailangan pa po nila ng extra copy. Okay, we can provide that to them. At easily, madali lang po yan i-provide. So it will not take, wala na pong turnaround time po yan. Once they requested us, uh, easily we can provide them a new copy or um, additional copy if they wanted to. Yan po. Okay. All right. I think that's all for our CTPL.